subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, welcome to Gate Lectures. Today we are going to record solution to SHOM series MCQ chapter 2. Uh, so, like I said uh, previously also when I recorded solutions to the first chapter, Shomsri is a very nice book and I, I would recommend that you solve this book yourself and uh, if you need any help, you can take help from this video and solve all the unsolved questions, all the examples and uh, all the questions from this book. Right, so we are going to look at MCQs in this video. In the next video, we are going to cover subjective questions, supplementary questions. Uh, supplementary questions are going to be helpful for the ESC mains exam and these MCQs are helpful for ESC uh, prelims or gate examination. Right, so look at the first question. So they are saying if HT is the impulse response of a causal linear time invariant continuous system then output a foreign input XT is. So we have already seen that output YT for a linear LTI linear time invariant system linear LTI causal system is given by YT, YT is given by convolution of input XT convolution integral of input xt with the impulse response ht which is defined as integration from minus infinity to infinity x tau ht minus tau d tau. This is how we can find output for a causal LTI system when input is known and impulse response. What is impulse response? Impulse response is the output of the system if the input applied is a impulse signal, unit impulse signal, right? So this is going to be the convolution integral. Now as you can see the answer is going to be option A. This is how actually we are defining output of a causal LTI system using convolution integral, right? Look at the next question. Uh, so they are saying if del n is the response of LTI discrete time system to unit step input, unit impulse responses. Okay, so uh, there is some printing mistake here. Actually they have given this as Sn, fine. So uh, according to see, if you see all the options we can judge this. So they are saying that Sn is the response, Sn is a step response. If you are applying a step input then you are getting output as Sn, right? So they are asking you then what is going to be the unit impulse response. So we have seen that unit impulse response can be obtained by differentiating or by differencing in discrete time uh, sense by differencing the step input, okay? So, uh, then what is going to be Hn, Hn, Hn? impulse response. What is going to be the impulse response of the system? Impulse response is going to be the difference of the step responses. Hn is going to be equal to Sn minus Sn minus 1. And if this would have been a continuous time system then we would have considered differentiation of the step in, uh, step response. Fine, so answer is going to be option C option C. Difference of step response is going to give you impulse response of the system. Fine. <coughs> Look at the next question. So they are saying that if response by LTI continuous time system to unit step signal is given and they are asking you to find impulse response. So just now we have talked about this right. Impulse response of the system is going to be differentiation of step response. Why? Why are we doing this is see when you are applying a unit impulse signal, you are obtaining unit impulse response, okay, impulse response HT. And when you are applying, uh, what I mean is, when applying del T as input, I am obtaining this HT as output, right? And when you apply input as UT, unit step, then you obtain output as ST. Now, since, since del T is, since del T is differentiation of this unit step signal and this is a linear time invariant system then the same relation is for, uh, going to be followed in the output side also. That is why HT is going to be differentiation of step response ST, right? Since this is a linear system then whatever uh, operations we are applying to the input same are going to apply to the output also. That is why if this is this, this given, this is the step response then how do you obtain the impulse response by differentiating it? I can obtain impulse response by differentiating this, right? Uh, now what is going to be the differentiation? Differentiation 1 by 2 is going to be 0, 
minus 1 by 2 is a constant. So, I will take this out. Differentiation of e power minus 2t is going to be minus 2 into e power minus 2t. Now, this is going to cancel, this is going to cancel. So, the impulse response is going to be e power minus 2t option b. So, the correct answer is going to be option b, right? Look at the next question. So, now they are saying that output of a linear system for step input is uh, t square e power minus t and they are asking for the transfer function. Now, see uh, transfer function they are talking in the s domain now. We have not looked at this but the next step we are going to see is Laplace transform. Fine, uh, we are going to discuss this in detail there how to find Laplace transform. For now, what you can remember is Laplace transform of ut is 1 by s. If I multiply this function by t, uh, right, if I multiply this with t to the power n, what happens is uh, in the numerator you are going to have n factorial. So, we are going to discuss this in the next chapter, ok. Uh, but for now you can just see this and and what happens in, in the denominator you are going to have s to the power n plus 1. Okay, this is what happens when you are multiplying this uh, ut with the t to the power n and if you multiply this with e power minus t what happens? This is shifting in frequency domain. Okay, This is going to create a shift in frequency domain. right? Uh, shifting this multiplication with e to the power minus t is going to create a shift in frequency domain. Multiplication d power minus s in frequency domain is going to create a shift in time domain. Okay, uh, We'll look at this in detail in the next chapter. For now, what you can see is since this output contains e to the power minus t, then I'll have a shift of plus 1 in the frequency domain. So, uh, Laplace for t square e power minus t is going to be this is going to be uh, since the power is 2 I am going to have 2 factorial here and since I am having e power minus t this is going to create a shift of 1 in s domain and this power was 2 so I am going to have a cube here. Now since this is input uh, step response this was a response to step input signal but they are asking transfer function is always taken in uh, reference to impulse response ok. Transfer function you are obtaining always with respect to impulse function. Now since this is the response for unit step signal what am I going to do is I am going to multiply see uh, unit step signal this is unit step signal for what is transfer function actually transfer function is output upon input ok. This is how you are defining transfer function of a system. Since uh, why, what I was saying is that this transfer function is always taken with respect to unit impulse signal why because for unit impulse signal for this delta del t transform Laplace transform for this is 1 ok. So, this denominator becomes 1 right. So, uh, now this input was unit step signal this is the output. So, what is going to be the transfer function then output upon input, input which was 1 by s. So, if you just take the option, option b is going to be the correct answer. Fine, we are going to look at Laplace transform in detail next. Fine, for now you can just uh, see this, right. Uh, so, moving for the next question. So, they are asking which property is not true for convolution integral, right. So, we have uh, studied different properties for convolution integral that it is associative, commutative, distributive properties, scaling, shifting, right. So, just going to check H1 t convolution H2 t is equal to H2 t H1 t. Yes, we studied that convolution is commutative. So, this is true. See, uh, read the question properly. Sometimes students make a mistake here. They are asking for a property which is not true, ok. Sometimes people see that this is true and they take the uh, answer. Uh, try to avoid these kind of mistakes also, right. So, they are asking for the false property, fine. Uh, now, the next property is H1 t plus H2 t convolution H t. This is distributive property of convolution which is true. Now, look at the third part, right. Now, see what they have done is in third part they have they have uh, made this convolution, they have replaced this convolution with simple multiplication which is not true, okay, which is not going to hold true. If they would have put here convolution, this would have been true. Okay, You cannot re replace convolution with simple multiplication of signals. So, this is going to be the false property not true. right? So, answer is going to be option C. 
fine. Okay, last property also we have seen that the convolution is associative, so this is true, fine. Look at the next question now. Okay, now see, uh, look at this question very carefully. They are asking you for anti-causal signal. So we have seen that a signal of this form, x t is equal to 0 for t less than 0. This is how we define a causal signal. If a signal holds this property, we say that a signal is causal. Now, when is a signal going to be anti-causal? Anti-causal means opposite of causal, okay? We say a signal is anti-causal if it is 0 for t greater than 0. This is how you are defining anti-causal signal, okay? This, it should have value 0 for all positive time instances. And see here, now you may get confused that why is answer not D, okay, why is it not D? See this is a non-causal signal, non-causal and anti-causal are two different properties, okay. Anti-causal signal is different from non-causal signal. If a signal is having some value for T less than 0, we can say that it is non-causal. But for a signal to be anti-causal, it should have value 0 for positive time instances, okay. So this is going to be an anti-causal signal, whereas uh, this, this D option, this is going to be a non-causal signal, fine. There is a difference between non-causal and anti-causal. This first part, this is going to be a causal signal or also C part all both of these A and C they are going to be causal signals okay but they ask for anti-causal so be very careful anti-causal and non-causal are two different kinds of signals right okay fine uh, now they are asking for Weibo stability of LTI system so we have seen that if uh, impulse response system is absolutely integrable that is, if a mod of the signal integrated over entire time period gives a finite value, then we say that the system is Bebo stable. So, we looked at this derivation also, right? When we looked at stability of a system, we looked at its derivation that if a input is bounded, if, if we are having, if we are providing a bounded input, then for to check stability of a system, we can just check the absolute integrability of the impulse response. If the impulse response is absolutely integrable, we say that the system is Bebo stable. Fine. So, if you just look at options, uh, this A option is going to be the correct one. Okay. This impulse response, it should be absolutely integrable. Mod of the impulse response integrated over complete time period should have a finite value, should be less than infinity. Fine. Look at the next question. So, they are asking you that which one is going to be the wrong mathematical relationship. Uh, okay, fine. If you just uh, look all the options one by one. So, in the first option, they say that a summation from k is equal to 0 to an x k x n minus k is equal to summation. Okay, so they just they have just uh, interchanged the arguments of these function. See, we have seen that for a causal system, if we are giving a causal input, if causal system is given a causal input, then this relation is going to hold true. Both of these relations are going to hold true, okay. So, this is going to be a correct relationship. In the second one, what they have done is they are just defining convolution uh, integral, convolution sum. So, what is convolution of Hn uh, with Xn? It is uh, summation k from minus infinity to infinity Hk into Xn minus k. This is also true. Now, look at the C option. What they are saying is Hn convolution Un is going to be k uh, in summation k minus infinity Hk into C. This, this should have been u of n minus k right because you are convoluting you are convoluting this hn with un so here i should have got unit step signal not impulse signal so this is going to be a wrong mathematical relation last one just defines associativity of convolution sum which is true okay so all these options are true except for option c here in place of del k we should have we should have got unit step signal u n minus k okay Right, so now look at the ninth question. So they are asking you to identify the correct statement. Okay, so <coughs> uh, if you just look at the B part, 
this is not correct we know okay extra convolution delta is going to be equal to xt only convolution of any signal with impulse signal is going to give you signal itself and if you are convoluting with a shifted impulse you are going to obtain the same shift in the same shift in the signal okay uh, we've looked at this property right that if ft convolution gt is giving you ht then if you are making any shift in any signal any shift in any of the signals then the shift is going to appear in the output also so you know that uh, convolution of any signal with with impulse signal gives the signal itself why see this is going to be this convolution integral is going to be minus infinity infinity x tau del of t minus tau d tau right and you know you know this integral right what happens in this integral is this is going to be x tau at tau is equal to t fine tau is equal to t which is going to give you x t only now if i am making a shift of t naught in this impulse signal same shift is going to appear in the original signal so this c option is going to be the correct one fine uh, now look at the 10th question right so they want you to mark the wrong statement just look at all the options one by one ft into del t is going to be equal to f0 into del t we have studied this property of sampling of impulse signal uh next next option is integration uh, of del tau d tau from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1 which is also true area under impulse uh, signal they are asking okay we have seen that area under the impulse signal is equal to 1 we have designed we have uh, taken this signal defined the signal such that area under impulse is going to be 1 unity right now look at the next one now see this delta this occurs at tau is equal to 0 so if i just use this shifting property this is going to be equal to f of 0 not equal to 1 so this is a wrong statement and last option also this impulse occurs at occurs at t is equal to capital t so this this is going to be value of this function at capital t into del of t minus t shifted impulse right so all these statements are correct except for c Okay, the next question now. Uh, right, so now you have to identify the false statement. So look at the options. Xt convolution delta is going to be equal to xt. Yes, convoluting any signal with impulse signal is going to give you the signal itself. If you convolute a signal with a shifted impulse, the same shift is going to appear in your original signal. So uh, second one is also right. Third one is also right because I am making a shift of lambda 1 in x and a lambda 2 in uh, this delta then both the shifts are going to appear as it is in the output fine. Now look at the last option you, you they made a shift of lambda 1 in the first impulse shift of lambda 2 in the second imp uh, impulse. Now both of these shifts will appear but um, uh, convoluting two impulse signal is going to give you impulse only so that should have been del of t minus lambda 1 minus lambda 2 okay they have avoided t here okay they have given you only lambda 1 minus lambda 2 which is wrong so the wrong statement is going to be option d the answer is option d fine look at the next question response yt of a linear system is so we have seen this that response of a linear system is equal to its zero input response plus zero its state response what is a zero input response when you're not applying any input due to previous conditions of the system due to memory of the system they we are obtaining zero input response and what is a zero state response when you're applying input to the system not because of the state of the system because of the input you're going to obtain zero state response and by adding both of them we are obtaining total response of a linear system okay right if the system is time invariant you're not going to have the zero input response okay so they said linear system that is why we are taking option c if this would have been linear time invariant system we would have only zero state response okay fine uh, look at the next question so they are saying for positive values of n what is going to be a value of this okay uh, so we are going to look at this one by one see how are you uh, making u k I am drawing graphs of both these okay both these unit step signals so this is how you, we are having u k and so on 
right now i wish to draw uk minus n so this is going to be since n is a positive number they've already told you that n is a positive number so this is just going to be a shifted step signal shifted step signal which starts from starts from k is equal to n k is equal to n right and continue like this now if i just multiply these two if i just multiply these two signals then they are going to have impulses starting from n only right all the impulses which were before k is equal to n are going to vanish so we are going to obtain impulses which are starting from k is equal to n and greater than n so i can say that this is going to be one whenever k is greater than or equal to n fine so option b is going to be correct right now they are talking about finite impulse response this fir fir is finite impulse response and the other type of system that we are having is iir which is infinite impulse response okay uh, so obviously fir system has finite impulse response that is what its name is finite impulse response right look at the next question iir system is infinite impulse response so answer is going to be option d this is how you're defining these systems right right zero input response is due to zero input response is due to transfer function of the system and due to system state okay zero input response is basically before the input has been given to the system what was the state of the system the zero input response is going to depend on the state of the system or the transfer function of the system if a transfer function of the system is having some constant some values which occur uh, without input also then we are going to obtain the zero input response so it depends on system's transfer function and it is due to system state right both these are correct so answer is going to be option b fine look at the next question now zero state response now zero state response is due to input of the system right and it also depends on the c in both the inputs of the system both the uh, response of the system uh, may be zero input response or zero state response is going to depend on the transfer function of the system right that is why we are defining transfer function so both of them are going to depend on system transfer function but zero input response is going to be due to uh, system state and zero state response is going to due to input of the system so the answer is again going to be option d both due to input and depend on system transfer function right look at the next question now in memory less system so i've just uh, told you right now that what happens in memory less system in memory less system there is not going to be any zero input response okay only when you are giving the input you are going to obtain any response before that you are not going to obtain any response because state of the system is not saved okay there is no previous state of the system there is no memory no it, uh, response is going to occur due to state of the system fine so zero state response is going to be zero there is no zero state response fine why because this system is not having memory okay this is not saving anything fine right so look at the next question now they are asking you for eigen value of a continuous lti system if response is yt uh, so uh, we have already talked that eigen value is lambda at or hs and is defined as integration from minus infinity to infinity h tau e power minus s tau d tau right this is how we are defining eigen value now they are asking you this value in terms of the output so you know that yt output of the system is given as ht convolution e power st why because e power st is the eigen vector right so if you convolute the system with the, the, the impulse response with this function then only you are going to get the output which is going to be equal to minus infinity to infinity h tau e to the power s t minus tau d tau now since t is an independent variable here it does not it is not involved in the integration so i can just take it out and this is going to become <coughs> h tau e to the power minus s tau d tau right now this is this is what y t is now if i just put t is equal to 0 in this equation then y 0 is going to be equal to e to the power 0 is going to be 1 and this is going to become minus infinity to infinity h tau 
e power minus s tau d tau right now if you just see this definition of lambda definition of the this is this is how you're defining eigenvalue right this is how you're defining eigenvalue of a LTI system so if you just look at this definition this definition they are the same so I can say that eigenvalue of a LTI system can be defined as its output at t is equal to 0 so eigenvalue of a LTI continuous system is going to be equal to y0 right so the answer is going to be option a right similarly for a discrete time system y n uh, this uh, eigenvalue for a LTI discrete system is going to be y at 0 y at n is equal to 0 right same same procedure fine uh, now look at the next question so it's uh, they are asking that if the step response of a causal LTI system is ST then what would be the output of the system if the input is XT right so the input is XT and they have given us the step response now you know that whenever I need to find out the output for any general signal I need impulse response how can I obtain impulse response impulse response can be obtained by differentiating the step response impulse response is differentiation of step response now output output is going to be impulse response convoluted with the input right so this is going to become minus infinity to infinity in place of ht what can I put ds tau by dt into xt minus tau d tau right <coughs> but it is saying that the system is a causal system causal system means that it is not going to respond to the values to the inputs which occur before t is equal to 0 so I can just modify modify this integral and make it 0 to 0 to infinity okay right 0 to infinity or or and this is going to become ds tau dt xt minus tau d tau fine uh, now if you just look at options so this is going to be option a fine option a see uh, they have they have taken xt plus tau and limits from 0 to t that is going to be the same thing okay because i am uh, <coughs> since the given system is a causal system causal system which means that there is no not going to be any response for for t less than 0 okay for uh, time intervals which occur before uh, this okay so I can just change the argument of the function from t minus tau to t plus tau and limits are going to change accordingly right so that is going to be option A fine look at the next question now so they are saying that impulse response of the system is given as follows and they are asking you to uh, calculate the transfer function okay impulse response uh, using the transfer function so actually this is a question to calculate inverse Laplace uh, right we have not looked at it this though but uh, since we have discussed some basics of Laplace we are just going to look it now see this HS this given HS can be written as 1 by S square into 1 by S plus 1 now see multiplication in frequency domain multiplication in s domain is equivalent to convolution in time domain if two signals are convoluted in time domain then their respective laplace transforms are multiplied in frequency domain so see uh, inverse laplace for this signal is going to be inverse laplace for sig this signal is going to be tut right we discussed this okay uh, in Laplace for ut is going to be 1 by s and if I multiply with t its power is going to increase by 1 and uh, in numerator I am going to have 1 factorial this is going to be e power minus t ut right e power minus t ut why because there is a shift of plus 1 so this is multiplication with e to the power minus t in time domain which creates a shift of plus 1 in frequency domain if I just convolute these two signals in time domain they are going to be their Laplace transform is going to be multiplied in frequency domain <coughs> so uh, just see this is option d right ut can be taken out this is going to be t convolution e to the power minus t fine this is option d right look at the next question now so they have given the impulse response of an LTI system and they are asking you about stability and causality of the system now see we have already discussed this stability of a system can be calculated by see if this impulse response is absolutely integrable or not right if the if this if some this is absolutely summable since this is discrete time so absolutely summable if this response is absolutely summable we say that the system is going to be a stable system and how do you check causality of the system if the 
impulse response is not available for instances n less than 0 then we say the system is causal system since you can see here this this occurs at n is equal to minus 3 right this is going to occur for values of n less than 0 so this system is not causal non causal see we do not say that this is anti causal okay anti causal and non causal are two different things since this system has values occurring for n less than 0 we say that the system is non causal okay now you can uh, just see you can check the stability of the system since see this system is this this is having uh, Okay, this is having a unit step of size 1 which occurs at n is equal to minus 3, then a unit step which occurs at n is equal to 2 and then a step of size minus 2, right. Since coefficients on adding coefficients of these unit steps, I am obtaining 0 which means that the signal is of finite duration, that is it is absolutely summable, okay. So, this is going to be a stable system, stable but non-causal right option a this is how you are checking stability okay you check you can see the duration of the signal this is a finite duration signal we have discussed this right if the coefficients of uh, this unit steps add up to 0 then we say that the signal is finite duration signal so the signal is going to be absolutely summable right so this is a stable system as well as non causal fine look at the next question so they have given a first order circuit which is initially relaxed and they are describing this uh, in this way and they are asking you to calculate yt. See uh, since this is this uh, can be solved by ok fine. So what, uh, what can we do is see there are two ways of solving this one way is just you just put xt is equal to 2 ut here in this given differential equation and on putting after putting this you just solve this differential equation okay and one more way is by using laplace transform which is a much easier way so uh, for timing i'm just using laplace okay i'm just converting this equation into uh, s domain so this is going to be s y s plus 2 y s is equal to xs right now you you need to calculate uh, yt so what can i say ys into s plus 2 is equal to xs which makes ys equal to xs by s plus 2 right now since xt is equal to 2ut xs is going to be 2 by s which uh, makes this ys y s is going to become 2 upon s into s plus 2 right now we using pa partial fractions okay we are using partial fraction technique so uh, this is going to become s plus 2 minus s okay just just i am uh, expressing numerator like this okay upon s into s plus 2 fine so i can just write this see i am just uh, separating these terms so this is going to become 1 by s minus 1 by s plus 2 right i just expressed 2 as s plus 2 minus s and then i separated these terms so this became 1 by s minus 1 by s plus 2 right now if you just try to take inverse laplace inverse laplace inverse laplace of 1 by s is going to be equal to ut minus this is a shift of minus 2 right this is a shift of minus 2 so this is going to become e to the power minus 2t ut right now already in the question they said that the system is initially relaxed which means this this ut just signifies that okay so i can write this as 1 minus e to the power minus 2t which is option a option a so this is going to be the correct option okay there is one more way to solving this which is that you put the uh, xt is equal to 2 ut here and you solve this differential equation okay so uh, i would not prefer that because this solving by laplace is a much easier way to do right uh, now look at the last question a discrete lda system is represented by impulse response which is given and they are asking you about the causality and stability of the system so since this signal is multiplied with un this is going to occur only for values of n greater than 0 which makes it a causal system causal system right and uh, now about stability if the system is absolutely summable we are going to say that the system is stable now see this is going to have value 1 for n is equal to 0 for n is equal to 1 value is going to decrease to half then 1 by 4 1 by n now this value is going to decrease as n increases okay this is going to 
decrease slowly for with each increasing n value so this is going to be a absolutely summable signal which means that the system is stable so correct option